Well, hello friends. We are feeling a little bit of spring fever. We're feeling a little bit of those warmer, longer, sunnier days. And what I wanna do today is get out some Easter decor, some spring decor. Now, I post a lot of videos on my Christmas winter decor, on doing outdoor things, doing indoor trees and things. And I don't have to do other times of the year because usually I don't switch things up a lot. Last year I was going through a remodel that was on my second floor, but was kind of had to have stuff housed on my first floor. So it pushed things that I couldn't really do anything or enjoy the different seasons on the main floor either. And this year I can now get some things out again. And you know, if you have followed me, you know I love collecting. You know I have a heart for antiques. I got that honestly from my mom, from my grandma. And a lot of these things I'm gonna be talking about today and gonna to be getting out and using are vintage and antique items. And I wanna show you the different ways I use them because one of the number one questions I get from people is, what do you do with this stuff that you collect? And this is a way to show you and hopefully maybe give you some applicable tips and tricks on what I do to make it feel useful, but also kind of modern also, because I think we sometimes think of old things as just outdated and we don't know how to use them. So this is all about how I'm gonna use some of these things that are in front of me. Now, Easter, you can see, as opposed to Christmas, I have like three tubs and they're the small size tubs of Easter things. And a lot of them, plus an egg crate, and we'll, we'll get to why. A lot of them are paper mache items, which I'll talk about some of those things. But the first thing I wanna talk about are eggs, and that's why I have an egg crate in front of me. Now, obviously eggs are a beautiful harbinger for spring because they usually show new life. That's why we love to have eggs. And I like to collect various forms of eggs, so I wanna go through some of those. So some of my favorites here are marble eggs. And I do specifically look for, Kip is excited for marble eggs too, you guys, if you hear him. But what I do wanna look for is real marble, 100% eggs when I'm looking for the meaning. They are the color through and through. Sometimes you have to be careful and it's a fake marble egg and it will fade and the color is just put on the outside. You wanna look for real marble that is made in eggs. And honestly, I have found these for as little as $2 a piece. Um, and I think the most I've paid for one is nine. So it just kind of depends on what ones, and that's for the marble ones. And what I like to do with them sometimes is something as simple as this bowl of moss sits, and I'll give you a close up here soon, but sits on my table year round. And it can be just a nice place to house some different types of eggs. But in this egg crate are the various ones I collect. So I thought we could go through some of these talk about what I like about them because there's various levels in here. So what you see in front of me is a metal egg crate and this is my mom's idea. This is how she stores eggs now at her house for different things like this that we collect. So she got me one too eventually because it is very sturdy and houses them really well. Obviously the hard thing about some of these eggs, they're delicate and they're not fun to store. So this makes it that you can find these inserts, the cardboard ones that separate them. Now they're on multiple levels and we'll kind of go through some of the various ones because I think they're all fun. The lowest cost ones are just eggs, homegrown eggs that I've gotten from various friends. And over the years, we used to blow out a lot of them and then they just get a nice, you know, patina that you can use year to year. You have to prick a hole on each side, take a long needle in, and that usually allows you to blow out the egg and yolk on the other side yolk and white and be able to cook with it, bake with it, whatever you want, but then dry out that shell and use it. What we have also found is the shells are porous. So over time they lose moisture. So if we keep them at a cool constant temperature, sometimes in one year or more, they will dry out completely and then you'll have a petrified egg with no holes. Personally, we've been liking this better because they seem to have a stronger shell and they work really well. And then there's no obstruction and there's nowhere that has those holes. So we really like those. Over time, we also, sometimes I collect some different types of antique eggs. So you'll find both wooden eggs and glass eggs, like these melt glass ones. And those are usually nesting eggs. And nesting eggs like this were used to help get a hen to lay correctly where you want her to lay an egg and go to the nest and lay an egg. So if she has one she's sitting on, she understands the concept. So there are both wooden ones, there are porcelain ones like this. I'd have to find some of my porcelain ones. I think here's one right here. It's hard to tell the difference, but this is a porcelain one, glass one, and then wooden ones. That, and they're all used for that nesting process. But then obviously more modern ones are just marble eggs. And when I'm looking for these, like I said earlier, you wanna look for a good quality marble egg, but they'll last forever. You hardly have to worry about these being broken. Obviously, I'm not gonna say they're indestructible, but they're pretty close. And it's really fun to find different ones and mix and match them. And that's what I do with all of these eggs. You know, it's fun just to fill bowls with blown out or petrified eggs. Same with 
the glass eggs because they all have different looks. Some of these are satin glass like this one. Some of them are more opaque. I think I have one down here. Yes, this one is really pretty. It has an opaque quality to it. So you can find a lot of different variations within that same variety that are really fun to work with. So today my hope is just to show you some various ways that I'm going to use them, what I'm going to do here for the next month in my house as we're getting close to the Easter and spring holiday here. So I do want to start with, you know, I didn't use like table runners, but layering something on a table that you can also use when you're having guests over is just really nice. So I'm using the scalloped runner, which I think has a nice kind of cotton linen weave to it, which I really like, but instantly the scallop on the edge, it makes you think spring. I'm using that same big wooden bowl that I've been having year round. And what I like about this is I find various ways to use this. So I will use it with moss at Christmas. I put a little arrangement in it. The green background can really be neutral, but what I'm doing right now is using the marble eggs within it. So I'm gonna place all these different ones around and nestle them in. And I'd like to do a little grouping, sometimes two or three, sometimes one by itself. But what's nice is it doesn't take many to start kind of having that effect of something special. And you can see that pretty quick, these start creating this cohesive look of something really fun. Now, when I'm doing something as simple as this, you need something in the center that's gonna feel a little bit more gravitating or something that you wanna look at. There's multiple options. So right here in front of me, I have a big antique cast iron more doorstop bunny. These were, these are really fun. You can find aluminum ones. They're not as old, the cast iron ones. They are so cool because they have such a good patina and again, they're indestructible. So they're really fun to have around. But then you can also do just a paper for mache. So this is another antique one, but I also have then a brand new vintage style one. So anymore you can find a vintage look if that's what you like. It kind of looks like the shape of a chocolate bunny and it's foiled. So, you know, something as simple as this sitting in the middle would be really pretty with eggs all around it. I kind of feel like the bunnies are guarding it, but I'm gonna go with a little bit more of a natural approach with this beautiful, little paper mache ones. So sometimes these, you know, in the early 1900s were used for candy containers and sometimes they were just used for decor. The larger ones weren't necessarily candy containers, but the smaller ones were. But along with this, I thought I brought up one of my tubs that has, I was gonna show you, some various little mushroom picks that you can also use. So these are like floral picks and these are things that you could find at any floral store. And you're going to kind of laugh if you follow me because you know I somehow find reasons to use mushrooms at various times of the year. Now I do have some petrified mushrooms that even some of you have sent me by mail and those look really pretty in here. But these ones with a pick, you can see they just have this simple pick on the bottom. And what I have underneath this moss is just some, I think it's bubble wrap. I have a couple layers of bubble wrap, but the moss itself gives you enough something that you can stick these picks in and create a little moment where these mushrooms are just popping out of that for forest floor. And yeah, I say that with all seriousness because look how fun and simple that is to create what feels like a little forest scape. And so it has the eggs that, you know, this bunny is guarding, which I always think it's funny that we put bunnies and eggs together. And yes, I know the meaning behind it, but I think it's just kind of a fun, whimsical thing we do that really when you think about it, you kind of stop and think, wait, that doesn't really make sense, even though over time it does. So I'm just going to stick in a few of those and instantly now I have a centerpiece using things I've always used, things I've always had, and just finding new life for them. And I think that's what I strive to do every year is not buy brand new things because I know as stores we get new things and we really love them, but I love to use some of these things I've collected and that I've had for years in a way that this looks really pretty. But we can do the same type of thing in other parts of the house. What I wanna do is more take you on an adventure, but give you a look here so you can see now what I'm saying. This bowl is a nice elongated bowl, so it sits well. My table isn't opened up right now, but it can open up to be larger, but this works for both spaces. And you can see how this paper mache bunny looks really good and actually looks a little bit better that way. So you can see that vintage bow better. That's a really nice kind of beautiful gross grain ribbon on it. What I wanna do though is we're gonna take a few of these old candy eggs. So again, these are just vintage eggs that would have had candy in them. They're usually from West Germany is usually where they were made. And we're gonna go over here to the coffee table in the living room because I think this is a great time to show that I don't change everything out, especially when it comes to things like Easter. Instead, this time of year what I do is make little adjustments that allow me to keep things mostly the way they are 
and just add in a few things. So I'm taking away some glass flish floats. These kind of just take up space in here and add kind of a nice filler into this big wood crate. Now you could do the same thing with this big bowl. You could fill it with moss, make a scene, put a big you know, rabbit or two on it. But I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and I'm just gonna create a space with these eggs. Now, if you look inside, there's multiple ones, kind of like a nesting doll. I kind of just keep them together. So when I want to, I can take apart the ones I want and just use a certain amount. So taking away the fish floats and the wooden ones that were in here, I can now fill in with some of these, which you don't have to, you know, I could make just this whole bowl full of them. But the thing is, I think sometimes, especially when it comes to other times of the year for decorating, like Easter, instead of making it feel like it's too much in your face, I like it to be more of a simple approach and just add a few small but perfect items and that's all you need. One of the eggs I love is a metal egg and it even has the year 1894 on it. So I think things like that, you know, we have such a throwaway culture now that to find unique vintage and antique items like this and be able to use them in the home, it just instantly to me is such a fun way to enjoy a season like this. But we can definitely still add other elements on this table to kind of tie it all together, which I think is what's really fun. Since I have the eggs here, I thought here would be a good time to know you sometimes have to edit things out. And I think for me, that's always something that I try to remind myself is if I'm gonna be adding in some type of seasonal decor, I want to edit out maybe things I had here other times. So this big cast iron bunny to me is a perfect example. I really like it here during Easter. It looks really good with everything else. It's low enough that it fits the scale. You could also put two really small ones which would look just as good. But then I wanna take away some of these items that are just more my everyday items that I sometimes put little flowers in these vases, things like that. But around Easter, we're gonna keep it more simple just so it doesn't feel like we're crowding out the spaces. In the TV room or family room here, usually I have a lot of Ozark Traveler's Pottery right up here in this area. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to switch it up. So I did do one book. I'll probably do one more yet just to elevate. You know, books in general, you can see that I use them and you see a lot of people use them in various ways. And it's because it adds levels and layers that allow you to have different heights and just kind of have a little bit more of this lived in and layered feel over time. So I put some different paper mache bunnies that I collected right on top of the book and beside it in a grouping of three. And in this little marble tray, I'm gonna just add some more of these petrified eggs now. Now these are the ones that some of them are blowing out, some of them aren't. But what I like is with the marble, they're kind of a muted color. And I think especially with things like those bunnies that are behind it. If you look, they have a lot of color on them. Even that book has some color. And this is only for a month. But this is a time where then it's good to balance it out with something that doesn't have a lot of color. Now if you listen to this one, do you hear that? That's that yolk inside of here that is petrified. So that's what they do after time. In some areas, I just add a few things in to what's already there. So like above the TV, some different paper mache bunnies, usually kind of like type or color, just so they complement each other. And if you have multiple, I think it's fun to display them in a row because it's more impactful and you don't need to create scenes or anything with them. Just sitting around those little touches instantly make you feel seasonal. That's what really to me seasonal decorating is about. It's not about impressing other people. It's about what's gonna make you walk into that room, give you a smile, make you say, that gets me really excited for the upcoming season. That's the type of stuff that matters. So one of the last things I wanna talk about is what you kind of fill a big bowl with if you don't wanna to have to fill it completely. So I have this big, it's about a 14 inch antique yellowware bowl on my hutch. And it's fun to be able to fill it, but sometimes I don't have enough of something or it just seems like a waste to pile so much in it or I don't want things to break and have too much on top of each other. Usually the first thing I would think of is what do I have that will fill up some type of volume within this? And so I have a couple pieces of foam that are usually floral foam probably, but this isn't floral, this is craft foam. And this has been used in various ways for this exact purpose for probably 10 years. And it will fill different things, but as you can see, it fills it all the way up to the top. So it depends how much you wanna do, but with something like this, if I wanna fill it to the top, this is where, right after I put that in, I will start taking different amounts of moss, just like I had on my dining room table. And that is what I fill and just cover that foam with. Because then you have a level surface that if you wanna put picks in it or whatever it is, 
you can cover it up. Now this for this job is a little bit too tall. So I'm gonna go look for something different here and show you what I will use. So sometimes what I do when it's something just doesn't even work and you wanna use something big is I took a smaller bowl. So this is one of those craft kind of paper mache floral bowls and it fits right inside of it. And what I can do now is cover this completely with moss and that's gonna be a space where I can put lightweight things and it will feel somewhat full. You know, it's any time you're going to use something that is much bigger than maybe the amount of stuff you have, you put something inside of it, that's what I do all the time, and create a way to cover or hide what you don't want to see. So the great thing here is this moss comes, you can get any kind of moss you want online, petrified, not petrified, any color you want, and what you can do with it is just layer it on top, and that's what you're gonna see me do. And I have different types, like I have Spanish moss down in this tub, so I have a various tub here that has all the different types of moss. And that's what I'm gonna do is just start layering that moss right in here. And then we'll show, I'll show you what I put on top of it. So we'll zoom in here so you can see it even better. But what I think is so easy to see, you can do whatever you want. You can cover things up with moss. I think moss is the thing that covers anything in the house. It works really well on house plants to cover the soil if you don't want to see it. It works really well in bowls just to give you year round something green. But then also at different seasons, you can look at those things and you can add little touches to them like these eggs like a bunny. So here I did want to mimic a little bit what was on the dining table behind me. So I put another paper mache bunny that's somewhat the same shape and form. And then I added just some of these melt glass eggs all around it in this moss. So it's a very soft approach. And that's what to me, all my seasonal decorating, other than at Christmas, is, is a soft approach to that season where you do little small touches that bring it all together. But let's go over some of the things we did and just see what the takeaways are. So to start, it's the dining table. I did put two enamel candlesticks here because I think I'm gonna use them on my Easter table this year, but a simple paper mache bunny with marble eggs, moss, those mushrooms. It's something that can just go in what I already had there, which is that moss in the wooden bowl. Super simple. If we go right over to the coffee table behind us, we're gonna see it's those candy eggs, those eggs that used to be filled with candy back in the day, and now they're just perfect to use. And you can find reproduction of these a lot of places, so that's a really easy thing. And to make it really simple, a cast iron bunny that just kind of brings that season together, but also feels natural because the color on it and the patina really blend in well with everything else that's around. In the TV room, I have still those paper mache bunnies with those blown out or petrified eggs in a marble dish. This one, I think I will, like I said, add one more book underneath. I just feel like it needs it. But again, it's just a simple way for just a few weeks to have something out that feels seasonal and be able to enjoy it. Just like above the TV, those paper mache bunnies. And then we're ending with, if you remember, what we just did here on the hutch, which is right around the corner in the dining room. And that is that yellowware bowl filled with moss, a bowl inside of it to take up space, and then that bunny and those eggs. You know, it's really simple things like that. I really like that concept, a soft approach to seasonal decorating. And I do think that's what I take. I will probably do a few things in the kitchen. Right now I have some branches when I was trimming trees in the orchard that I'm gonna force and hopefully they'll bloom here soon. I still have tulips obviously that I try to add when they go out just to feel springy and have some nice color. So I'll add a couple things, but honestly, to me, the kitchen is definitely more for working and I do lots of my video work in there and my recipe testing and writing in there. So I keep it somewhat minimal so I don't have anything in my way, but I will maybe add a couple touches, maybe even something above the hood, I'm not sure yet. But um, I hope this shows you that I find different ways to use the things I collect, but it's somewhat just natural ways to add little touches around the house. And I hope you can do the same. I hope you can see that you can find a couple of those elements that you might have. Tell me how you're doing it in the comments below. Tell me how you like to enjoy the Easter season and what you do to decorate or get ready possibly for family coming over and hosting. Cause that's what it is to learn and enjoy with each other. So have a wonderful Easter.